I'm Insomniac and this is the Panzera Flieger 46. Who are you? Insomniac. 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 <laughs> Okay, before we get this review started, huge shout out to Steve. Uh, that Spinnaker hull that you saw me review recently was also his. He dropped this watch off uh, for review before he even got to wear it. That is super cool. If you have any watches you'd like to see reviewed here on Should I Time This, email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I'll let you know where to send the watches. They'll be reviewed, insured, and sent back. And before we jump into this, make sure that you subscribe. I have a lot of new watch reviews coming soon. Hit the like button, all that stuff, notification bell, you know, so you know when new reviews come out. All that stuff you hear all the YouTubers saying. Let's get into it. The case on the Flieger 46 is really nice, with one exception that we'll talk about in a minute. It's a steel case, mostly brushed with a polished bezel and polished lip that separates the multi-part curve that starts at the top of the case sides and divides the sides of the lugs. The rest of the case is brushed, and if you look especially at the tops of the lugs and the sides of the case, you'll see a beautifully done linear brushed pattern that's neatly done in uniform all the way around. The case back is a screw down type with an exhibition window so you can see the surprisingly undecorated NH35A automatic movement in action, I mean, I understand that they didn't make the movement, but the NH35A movement doesn't cost very much and this watch isn't exactly cheap. A decorated rotor or something would have been nice at least. But anyway, under this rear glass you have a cool slotted pattern that almost reminds me of an automotive rotor engraved into the steel ring around the movement. The outer edge of the case has information about the watch neatly engraved into it. The crown on this watch is also very nice. It's a good size for this watch without being obnoxiously large, and it has the Panzera logo embossed into the center with the Panzera brand name also embossed around the outer edge. Most importantly, the crown has nice knurling on it, which makes it very grippy and makes winding and setting the watch a breeze. The only thing I don't like about this case is the size. Now this is definitely more of a preference issue, for example, the person who lent me this watch for review has larger wrists than I do, so I think it'll look the part on the owner. But on my own standard 7 inch wrist, the watch is just too big. Rather than sitting on my wrist, it kind of gives the impression that it's engulfing my wrist, literally covering it entirely. So again, that's not a negative overall because some people have larger wrists, but for me personally, it's too large. The dial on this watch is almost amazing. For me, it was so close to excellence that the two small details I'm going to point out in this section were almost painful for me, because the dial, in my opinion, could have been perfect for a pilot watch. Starting with the base of the dial, it's a standard flat black backdrop, which starts things on a great clean note that makes literally everything else on the dial really pop with contrast. The very outer edge of the dial has a small but clean and legible 24-hour scale on a slightly raised chapter ring. Just below that, you have a nice and simple hour and minute track, the minute track done in standard printed white lines, while the hour markers are basically large white loom fillings with very fine applied polished borders, as well as the classic pilot watch triangle and two dots marker at 12. The hour indices are large, but they're proportionately large with the diameter of the dial, so they're just the right size here. The next thing you'll notice is great symmetry. You have eight of the large rectangle markers for all of the hours except quarter hours, with the triangle we talked about at 12, and equal size smaller markers at 3, 6, and 9. You have a large 12 numeral under the 12 o'clock marker, then at the bottom above the 6 o'clock marker a large 6 numeral. You have Panzera printed under the 12, and automatic printed opposite that above the 6. Next to the 9 o'clock index, you have Flieger 46 printed in a cool red script, while opposite that, next to the 3 o'clock index, you have a nicely sized wide date window. So a lot of great flow and clean design here. The hands on this watch are awesome. They're like your typical large broad sword style hands you might see on a watch like this, except they're not. First of all, the bottom third of the hour and minute hands are done in the same flat black as the base of the dial, which here under these bright lights doesn't look too impressive, but in most standard or dim lighting situations, actually gives you the impression that the white parts of those two hands aren't attached to anything like they're magically pointing to the time without any assistance at the stem, and that's really cool. 
I also like the fact that they're skeletonized, which A, just looks cool, but B, has a functional purpose, because if a hand is over the date window, you can still see the date, and that's useful. The second hand is a standard stick style hand, but done in white with a red tip and cool red and white striped pattern on the counterbalance. All in all, I thought the style was simple, clean, well balanced, and super stealthy with those semi-hidden main hands. The two issues that make this less than perfect for me are number one, the hand length. This is something I complain about often on this channel, but the hands are too short for this style. Can you tell where they're pointing? Absolutely. But with the massive diameter on this dial, the hands should have been a couple millimeters longer at least. And two, some of you might have already seen this, but the triangle marker up over the 12 is crooked. It's cocked slightly to the left. Now, I'm sure they're not all like that, but this is one of those things that you notice and you can't stop noticing. If this watch had a longer handset and that one marker wasn't crooked though, I think this dial, for what it is anyway, would have gotten a perfect score. The only usable complication on this watch is the date at 3 o'clock. It's a white numeral on a black disc, which was a perfect choice for this dial, and I'm not generally a fan of what they call wide date windows, where you can see more than one numeral on the disc, but again, perfect choice for this dial, because given the super large diameter of the dial, the wide date window adds just enough extra visual presence on the right side of the dial to kind of fill the right amount of space and make it look comfortable. Add that to the fact that they have a red arrow that points to the correct date, with the fact that it's a cleanly legible set of numerals on that disc, and this complication is not only very useful, but looks great too. Despite the large amounts of loom filling on this watch, the loom actually isn't all that good, except for when you charge it with sunlight. I got a solid, bright, even charge out of the loom after having it in direct sunlight, but other than that, regardless of what other kind of light source I tried to charge this loom with, I got fairly dim loom that doesn't really last all that long. And aesthetically, we have another strange disconnect here, because I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see this here on screen with the camera making slight auto adjustments for contrast, but despite mostly everything glowing evenly and uniform, the loom on the hour hand glows a little bit brighter than the loom on the minute hand, which I found odd. Long story short, the loom works, and it's functional enough that you'll be able to make out the time in the dark if it was exposed to a strong enough light source beforehand, but it's really not great. Time at a glance on this watch is amazing. Despite my complaint earlier about the hands being the wrong size for this dial aesthetically, the dial is large, the indices are large, the dial is uncluttered and clean, the white hands, loom fillings, and printing against the black have perfect contrast, and the large hands and in very defined tips that clearly show you where each one is pointing. So it's very easy to read the time on this watch at a quick glance. The strap on this watch is actually pretty nice. I'm not usually a fan of alligator print leather straps of any kind, but first of all, the print is subtle, and because it's a matte finish rather than a gaudy gloss finish, it's more of a cool, subtle, general texture rather than an in-your-face fake alligator strap. You also have a nicely polished steel buckle with the Panzera brand well engraved into it. The strap is reasonably thick, yet pretty pliable out of the box. I found it to be reasonably comfortable throughout the day and snug enough to hold the large watch body in place without much rotation, and the free loops hold the excess strap in place without me needing to fiddle with them all day. So overall, I'd say it's a nice strap. Last but not least, we have value. As of the time of this video, Panzera has the list price of this watch on their website at $585, but you can buy it on their website for $380. But I also saw this watch, the exact same model, color, etc. A couple of them brand new on eBay, I think it was for $330, so let's just call it $350. And if you're looking for a large pilot watch, I actually think it's a decent value at that price. Do you have competition in the $350-ish dollar range for this style of watch? Sure. And if you're nerding out on specs, the NH35A movement that's in this watch is a workhorse, but it's a fairly inexpensive movement that can be found in lots of cheaper watches. But if you like the aesthetic of this watch specifically and have large wrists, this is a well-made, handsomely machined pilot watch with a clean and balanced yet interesting overall design. So for that price, 
I'd give it a shot. Another big thank you to Steve for dropping this watch off. Brand new for me to check out here on the channel. Very cool piece. Again, if you have watches you want to see reviewed here, email me at shoulditimethis at gmail.com and I will give you all of the information you need. Make sure that you subscribe. I have a lot of new watch reviews coming up very soon. And that's it. I'll see you all next time.